Hey, welcome to Weld.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're going to try to show you how to test weld or actually do a certification to D17.1 on aluminum. Now, we've done that before on the show, but we haven't done heavier materials, so I want to describe if you're wanting to get into aluminum welding, you want to certify to some degree, we're just going to show you one of many, many ways of doing it, and that is a problem. There are many ways of doing it. So I just want to take eighth inch thick aluminum, and if you have a project uh, or you're a company that wants to certify, this material can be 6061, T4, T6. Uh, the fact is we're trying to see what the skills are of the operator. So metallurgically, just make sure you know what you've got. Now we happen to have 6061, T6. There is an oxide layer on here. So when you decide to certify, ask yourself a little bit about the part that you're welding. For instance, is it an aerospace part? Is it erodible? Is it high stress? Is it an airborne type part? And the chances are that it's going to be a class A weld. Now class A weld almost always requires x-ray in the table that they check for porosity cracks and micro cracks. Very significant, very difficult to pass, so you've got to do certain special things in cleaning to make sure you can pass that test. But today we had a customer or a, a person contact us and said, I just want to certify for general use, uh, ground support type equipment. And so if you take eighth inch material, what does that qualify you for? So butt, butt to butt weld. Here's the formula. The formula for D17.1 is if you do this in a butt weld, 1 8 inch, you're qualified down to 083 wall thickness and as heavy as half inch. You know, so that's, that's a pretty broad range. Now, depending on whether you weld it in 1G, if you're welding it in a flat position, that's all you're covered for. Now, you can go 3G, or you can go overhead, or you can go horizontal. Uh, what you want to do is you want to test to the worst condition that you're going to see. If everything is in the 1G, test in the 1G, and that's going to be part of your paperwork. So part of the series of what we're going to do in this testing is we're going to help you learn how to certify to D17.1. Is it easy? And the answer is no, not at all. This is, uh, this is about 100 pages, and we're going to cover everything from aerospace to racing cars and uh, we're going to cover just about every material known to man. So it started off and we thought it was going to be easy. We'd make a little checklist for you and you could go out and buy materials and do this. It's not that easy. There needs to be a question and the question is you have to have an engineer or welding engineer discuss this part with you. So if you certify, what are you certifying to? What, what's the part going to see? What kind of temperatures, what kind of vibrations, that sort of thing. So be prepared, and you know, we're prepared to answer your questions. So just be prepared to have a little discussion on that. Uh, anyway, that's what slowed up our process. So we're going to make it about a three-part process. We're going to come up with a list of all the materials, and if you get kit number one, it's going to certify you for certain thicknesses. That's going to come out very, very soon. The second part of it is when you look at it, you're going to call us or you're going to email us. It's best to email because we can go back and forth throughout the day and say, okay, this is the certification that fits you best. Okay, It's an honor system, so you have to be the one that takes the responsibility. If you weld in the 1G position and during the, the work hour you're working overhead, you're not qualified. You just disqualified yourself. So it is totally up to you. Anyway, what we're going to do right now is we're going to put this into a Class B or even a Class C. And in doing so, we know that we're just using it for general fabrication. We're not using it for aerospace. And this aluminum is fairly clean right from the get-go. Now, the machines nowadays, they create a lot of cleaning for us. But what they don't do is they don't take off the oils. So I'm going to, first of all, take this isopropyl alcohol, and I'm going to remove the oils off of this. Easy to do. doesn't take long at all. Now this, this material is actually certified. We get a little, little sheet that says it's 6061, it's been tempered to T6. Now on aluminum, just so you know, aluminum creates an oxide layer on it. And this oxide layer is pretty tenacious. Now the melting temperature of this material is right around 1200, 1240 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty low. 
Yeah, so why does it take so much energy to, to get a puddle started? Well, it just absorbs energy, dissipates heat very quickly. That's not the biggest problem with aluminum. The biggest problem with aluminum is there's a very thin membrane on there, and it's aluminum oxide. That oxide melts at about 3,400 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's always been a problem machining off or scraping, getting rid of that layer. It's a crust. And fortunately, the machine will do a lot of it for you. In this particular test, it's class B. We're not going to scrape. We're not going to do some of the fancy things that we do for x-ray type welding. So all I did was I wiped this down with uh, isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to tack weld and I'm going to weld it. Now this fixture that I have right here, it's not holding it down. All I'm doing is I'm actually holding it up. I don't need argon from the back side when I'm welding aluminum. So I'm going to punch through one side, make one pass, and then we're going to take it over to Cali College and let them do a penetrant check on it and see what it looks like. So bear with me, I'm going to get all my gear on and, uh, and we'll get started. Okay, from, uh, from end to end, it welded up very nicely. Um, nicely being that it's, it's dirty metal. You can, you can see the oxides on there. Uh, the cleaning action did, did its thing. Uh, consistency, width-wise, it's the same. You know, dabbing the filler, I didn't have any uh, below surface areas. You know, I mean, I can, I can see that it's all positive reinforcement. So when you look at that, visually you say, okay, it's okay. Let's Let's take it to the next test. Well, the next test is going to be penetrant inspection, and then the next test after that is going to be x-ray. So this is only half the equation. you got to turn the plate over and see how you did there. So I turned this plate over, and you know what? I did pretty good, except right there. Guys, I have a, I have a one inch area that's very likely, it looks like it tried to penetrate, but we're going to put it in the penetrant tank and, and see. It's likely to show a non-fusion right there or a crack. So uh, when we get into x-ray, it should show a crack there or a non-fusion. So let's just see what it does to the machine when we get over to, to the college. So right now, I'd say visually, this will not pass. So if you have get one of these tests and you take it and you have that, don't send it in. Just uh, order another set of plates, do it again. Otherwise, you're going to get charged for all these uh, tests that are going to take place, and we already know that it's suspect. So uh, anyway, this, that's the first part of this, and we're going to take this over to the college, and uh, we'll get back at you very soon. Okay, we did this test, and this is the 1 8 inch thick aluminum 6061T6. And then uh, we decided to come over here to the lab, Cali County College, the NDT lab has all kinds of things. Uh, I want to introduce to you Joe Clausen. Good to see you again. Joe is the NDT instructor here and he's got quite a setup. Now, when, when we call out the specs on this, this is a class B weld. Okay, now remember, you've got to call it out to according to what your company requires. This is not going to be an x-ray weld, so we didn't clean it real well. We welded right over the oxides, and it welded pretty decent. A little bit of rough. You can see some, you can see, I call them floaties. You know, all they are is oxides. And then uh, the best test for this is a, a fluorescent penetrant. So 
We have to do a visual first, and then we'll do a fluorescent penetrant. So I've got Joe here who's very trained at this. Now, he hasn't seen the back side yet. Now, the front side, tell me what you think of the front side so far, and what you would expect if you put that in liquid penetrant. Knowing that it's a little rough, the front side probably would not see much. We'll, we'll of course, see some indications from the, the shape of the weld, the, uh, the geometry of the weld there, but I wouldn't expect to see much on that other than just some of the in indications from this rough edge. Okay, so he'll, he'll double verify. And then uh, the other part of the verification is a visual. And so when you turn this over, you can see that there's penetration, penetration, and then, and then there's a line here. Well, to me, I think it's a non-fusion, so I wanted to bring it over to Joe, let him look at it, and tell me what you think. Absolutely. That, that looks basically like a lack of penetration where you didn't push enough, push enough weld metal through it. Okay. Now, to verify it, he's going to run it through his fluorescent penetrant tanks. And uh, do you think he can run this through? And, and what do you expect to see here at the end of it? If, if it works correctly, we'll see a big green blob. And, and I know that sounds kind of crazy, but you'll see a line down the middle of it, and then because of the, the cavity of penetrant, what's going to happen is it's going to start to bleed out, and as it bleeds out, that line is, or that blob is just going to get bigger and bigger. Okay. So uh, I'm going to give this to you, and uh, let's see what the results are. Perfect. So place penetrant on here. We're only testing just outside of the weld. What we have, of course, is penetrant. This is actually called the dwell time where penetrant is trying to seep down into the discontinuities if there are any. So we coated both sides of this. You can see that we have, of course, penetrant on both sides, and there will be indications on the ends where it wasn't fully welded across. And then when we flip that back over and rinse it and put it under the black light, you'll be able to see that, that lack of penetration. So, of course, rinsing that off just removes back to what we had before. If there were no defects when we put it under the black light, we won't see anything, but we got to dry it first. So, I'm spraying this with developer. We let the penetrant dwell, put it in the dryer after we've rinsed it off. We're putting a light coating of developer on there. We'll be able to see that under the black light in just a minute. I'm just putting a couple of light coats on there to, to begin to see kind of a white background. That background will help us kind of differentiate between the material and the penetrant. I'll put it on both sides. And if, if you can see, you can already start to see some of that green pull back out of there before we ever put it under the black light. Okay. So on the ends, of course, where, the, where there was no weld and the material is just hanging out, there is, of course, some, some indications. There are a couple of indications from the, from the penetrant coming back out. The weld itself has some spots on it from the, I'm going to call it porosity. We flip this to the back side. That's what we were wondering about. Up here at the top, we're not seeing too much. You see a little bit of an indication on the center line of that where there's some weld geometry there. But, of course, there's our green blob that we talked about earlier. So this, in fact, is a defect. Okay, now we have a built-in remnant area. The remnant is about a half an inch at the bottom. It's about a half an inch at the top. So we disregard, even if there's a defect there, that's okay. But what really is critical is that this centerpiece has to be spot on. It has to be good all the way. And visually, this looks okay, but it's got uh, some, some surface concerns. But when you turn this thing over, what do you see here? Unfortunately, this, this part does have a defect. It would not pass. Okay. Well, Joe, Joe cycled this, and, and you can see, and you can see in the black light very clearly, that even, even if you eliminate that half inch, man, there's, a, there's an area there of non-fusion, and uh, we got to go back to the drawing board. So here's the lesson in all this. I did this without scraping. I did this without filing. I did this without getting the aluminum oxides off. So even if you're doing class B or C, go ahead and do the cleanup process. I don't care how good your machine is, you need to get the oxides off. They melt at such a higher temperature, they'll do nothing but cause you problems. So, uh, gonna have to order some more materials, Joe. And uh, Unfortunately. Well, listen, thanks for everything. Not a problem, thank you. And thank you for watching TIG Time.
I'm Mr. Tig. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below. I'll, I'll, I'll come back when I, can, when I can get better. Understand that. I think the last one we tested for you, we failed too. Yes, well, that's, <laughs> that's the way it works, you know. It happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah. It happens sometimes.